You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted, a conversation on Christian ministry and the Christian life. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Brian Catherman, and with me is... Josiah Walker. Ah, my good friend Josiah Walker. We're at it again. We are today, Joe, we're going to reach into the mailbag. Is this our first mailbag episode? Uh, We've responded to some... Okay. to some emails before, but I'm not sure if we ever called it a mailbag episode. And I don't even really think this will be that because it isn't usually a mailbag episode where you deal with like two or three or four things from the mailbag. Right. Yeah, I only want to deal with one thing. Now, I have some emails okay. we could address, but I just want to deal with this one this one thing that I think is interesting, and it has to do with how we present the gospel using the three circles gospel presentation. Oh, okay. Awesome. And we did so we did that series about the gospel – Yes. And false gospels. And we've talked about this presentation before. So if you've never seen the Three Circles Gospel presentation on the saltybeliever.com website, you can click on what is the gospel. And there's like four or five different presentations. And one of them is this Three right. Circles where you have like God's design, uh, then an arrow coming out of that that says sin and then brokenness. And so sin leads to brokenness. And then all these little squiggly arrows, that's all of our attempts to mediate our sin. And there's right. only one way to do that. There's only one mediator between between God and man is Christ Jesus, right? So, so if we trust and obey, repent and and, uh, and follow, uh, all the other words we could use, right? Um, believe and be baptized. Anything you want to use is scriptural. If we follow Jesus, that's our path out of brokenness, not the squiggly lines. And then there's right. a there's a couple of issues here that I do want to talk about. Um, there's a circle at the bottom. I think in the actual presentation, I think it says gospel in that presentation. Uh, yeah. I think meaning the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'll come back to that because this is one of the issues. And then by going through the the path of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ through the cross, right? Then then we can be um, redeemed and restored, like right. to back into God's design. If you haven't seen that, you should yeah. go look at it. But I think we've talked about it plenty. So I received an email, and the email came with a about a 35-page long critique of the three Gospels, Gospel Sharing Method, and if indeed it actually aligned well with how the Bible presents the Gospel. Okay. And I'm not going to get into all the details of that. I'm not even going to quote it. I'm not going to – but it did provoke a couple of thoughts as I was reading through it. Um, so I want to chat with you about that a little bit. First thought that I had was, you know, everything that we do to do ministry probably deserves a really good and and solid critique if it's going to stand up. I mean, is that something? I mean, have you stopped and really critiqued the three gospel gospel sharing method? Have you done that for school? Have you ever really processed? Is this really solid? I mean, we do it with mission teams and stuff. But Josiah, how about you? Like, have you have you worked through it that way? No, I, I don't think I've really dove in and really looked at the theology behind it, or really, you know, looked at, at it under a micro, a micro, uh, mic- a microphone, ah, a microscope, <laughs> a mag- I, magnifying glass. I think we have we've repeatedly done with the church and with mission teams over the years, like said, okay, what scriptures affirm this? Sure. What we haven't done is said, now that I've read the Bible, is this the best shake? How could it be modified and improved upon? Yeah, no, that's a good point. And I think we should be doing that. Okay. I think as we look at various ministry resources and gospel sharing tools, we should say, how can we make them better? Right. And, yeah. and I've seen, now that I've look, kind of been thinking about this, I've actually seen, and it's been really interesting, different presentations that have actually improved upon sort of the original presentation. Now, the the critique I read, I agreed with some things. I did not agree with other things and, and just kind of worked through that. However... As it got me thinking, these are the two things that I went, no, hold on. I want to think more about this. Thing number one is that, that, that I was going to say bottom circle, but I guess it depends on how you draw it. But the one that right. says gospel in the middle. Right. Well, maybe if that's the micro gospel, just the perfect life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus right. Christ. But the macro gospel is the whole story that we're sharing. Are we sharing the gospel story? So to write gospel in there, I think, you tell me, you push back. You tell me if you think I'm I'm wrong on this one. I think if we write gospel in there, we don't quite give it a fair shake. Right. But I think we need to put something else in there. Have you seen some other presentations? Have you seen it done other, maybe you do it differently? How do you do it? Do you put anything else down there? Do you write gospel or how do you do this? Usually I just write the word gospel or I'll put a cross and I'll talk about it a little bit. 
But to your point, I could probably expand what I'm saying about it rather than just, you know, Christ lived a perfect sinless life. Um, probably what I could probably expand on, on why that's important, right? <laughs> for, for the sinner. Yeah, I've seen so I've seen some people do like the little arrow down across, they put a crown on the top, a little yeah. arrow up. Uh, I saw a guy do this because our staff here where I'm serving, we've all gone through sharing this, a, a staff meeting, each taking a turn. Yeah. And and one of the guys uh, did like, here's a great exchange. So he mm, kind of drew the little that. great exchange. Like when I do this, Christ died for my sin and yeah. I get his righteousness and gave a little explanation here without just saying gospel. This, this part is the gospel. Although in right. truth, this part in some ways is the gospel. Yeah. the micro gospel, but in other parts, the whole story is the gospel. So we just got to be thoughtful about how we present it. I've, I've been thinking about, like I've seen some people just put a cross there because um, this whole tool is that you're explaining it sure. as you're drawing it out or whatever, if you're drawing it out. Right. Um, do you think, do you think I'm being too nitpicky on this? No, I, I there's got to be a balance, right? Like I think as we're teaching it to teams, like you talked about, we find scripture verses that go with it that we can kind of expand and build on and on. Um, what we have to remember too, though, I, is that it, this is an entry point for sharing the gospel. So it's it's hard to cover everything from Genesis to Revelation in a 15 second conversation or a couple minute conversation with somebody. We're just trying to get the door open to really have further conversation about the gospel later on. That's At least good. that's how I use it. So yeah, no, I agree. I, I agree. Like, okay, here's here's this entry point, or here's this here's here is the gospel that if you would believe yeah. that you are a sinner, that God had a perfect design for you, and the only way that you can find a remedy for your sin, so you don't end up in in judgment against God, is that God sent his only son to make this great exchange by dying on the cross for your sins, by being put in the grave, by being raised to the to new life on the third day, ascending to the right hand of the Father. And if you would trust in that and believe that he lives, you know, confess with your mouth that he's Lord and trust him and believe that he was raised from the grave. He is who he says he is, you'll be saved. Okay. So I get I get all that. It's that it's a way of presenting just that, right? So Anyway, that's piece number one, and I don't know. Okay. I mean, I think yeah. something worth thinking about. I'm, I'm probably in the future not going to write the word gospel any there anymore. Right. Maybe yeah. I'll draw a cross and talk about it. Maybe sure. I'll draw the little, you know, guy, the exchange, the cross and the exchange. I like the exchange. Yeah, you know the 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 arrow. Jesus came down, died on the cross for us, became the king, went up. I mean, that's okay. It's good, but I think the exchange. If I could figure out how to draw that, you know, little yeah. the little arrows. You know, here's here's the cross. <laughs> Here's an arrow to a stick man. Yep. Here's an arrow. You know what I mean? Like, yep. this is the trade. Um, I think that's pretty helpful, maybe. Um, the other thing, though, and the other thing is really interesting to me. Uh, the discussion that have started, I mean, that this, this email prompted, and then as I've been working through it and thinking about it, is the critique is, as the three circles is sort of originally presented in that gospel sharing method, right. Um, it doesn't, so this person argues, give enough weight and significance to personal sin. Okay. And I think I can see that because I've seen people share it literally. I've watched people share it. They say, oh, yeah, God has a perfect design. Sin broke the world, and now there's brokenness. So there's cancer, and there's death, and there's pain, and there's heartache. And none of that is sin. Sure. It's a result of sin. Right. But it's not straight up rebellion and rejection against God. It's not high treason right. against the ultimate king of kings, right? So sure. so I think yeah. there's some fair critique to that. Sure. We're not just in a broken world because Adam and Eve sinned. Right. We're in a broken world because we sin. We right. contribute to the brokenness and we jack up our own lives and our own bad standing before God, our yeah. condemnation because of our personal sin, right? Not just the world's right. brokenness right. and sin. We're not just separated from God because of Adam's sin, but because of our sin, too. Right. And so, yeah. I, I think that's a really fair critique. I think there's a lot more that can be said there about sin. I've never really noticed that before. But, so. I, yeah, so I read that and went, you know, because if you're supposed to really recognize your own damned state, right. your own lack of, of justification before God to where you go, what must I, I do to be saved? Right. I right. need a Savior. So it takes the personal aspect out of it. Yeah. On a lot of levels where you go, wait a minute, the law condemns me. My right. sin condemns yeah. me, not just some sin, not yeah. just the world's brokenness, 
and so I almost feel like in a lot of ways when I'm, I think when I communicate it, I talk about my brokenness because of sin. But how often do you end up back in brokenness because you sin even as a Christian? Right. I've, Always. I've, I've just yeah. jacked right. my life up again. Yeah. So like yeah. his critique is we've taken the personal nature out of it. Yeah. And then I think what that does uh, is it almost takes the personal savior aspect out of it. You know, it almost makes it just a mechanical system if we're – not careful. Now, now hear me on this because I think this is important. I think when a lot of people are actually talking, I think we're throwing, I mean, a lot of people I think are bringing this in. I've heard a lot of these gospel presentations, even our staff presentations, yeah. and a lot of them went to almost a personal testimony. Right. If they didn't just straight up go to a person, this is me, this is what happens to me, this yeah. is very personal. And this could be you, right? And so in their presentation, they've modified this gospel share right. in a way that's very personal. But the critique is the tool itself do we give enough weight so that people, if they, they didn't think about this, they would also be giving critique? Um, I think that's interesting. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I Just between both these items that we've talked about, I think the key to remember is this is really more of like a framework for sharing the gospel. Um, I have a sticker on my phone that is kind of like the one you've been talking about that has the cross with the arrows and a squiggly line for the brokenness. And, and I have it on the back of my phone so that when I'm sitting in a restaurant or something, the waitress asks about it. I can open the door and share the gospel, but we have to tailor this based on the situation. So you might be talking with someone who's really struggling with a sin issue in their life, whether they realize it or not. Right. Like, Oh, right. my wife just left me. I, I was having an affair, that kind of thing. And so you can have a conversation, you know, underneath a lot of times in that tool, you know, you write the the arrow from uh, <laughs> God's perfect design to our brokenness. And a lot of times under that arrow, I'll write sin. Sin is what's brought us from God's design to the brokenness. Yeah. Uh, I usually say that, there, I usually say there, Adam's sin and then my sin, you know, like right. our sin contribution, but it, you know, yeah, keep going. Sorry. So you, so you can expand on that and, and talk more about sin. You're, you can share your testimony. You can talk about the sin issue that maybe this brother's confessed that he doesn't realize is a sin issue in his life, you know? Um, but sometimes if we just look at the sticker or the presentation, it's kind of bare bones, if you will. And, yeah. and really just need to, I think they've designed that so that you can build on it based on the conversation. Well, you're having. we had Jimmy Scroggins on the podcast and we, we talked to him about it. It was fun. It was yeah. really fun. So if you're looking for that, if you go to saltybeliever.com, go to the Salty Believer unscripted options, unscripted or whatever, uh, like in the resource link or whatever that is, resources, unscripted. And then uh, just do it like a little find and search because the list is super long. But you can find Jimmy Scroggins and just search his name and that podcast is available and he's I remember the one talking, that came up with this. Yeah, he so he so I asked him like, oh, he didn't copyright or anything, and he's like, it's just circles and arrows, man. <laughs> like, uh, but he came up with it because he was doing a marriage class, or I guess it was maybe a, it wasn't. I don't know. I can't remember if it was pre-marriage. I think it was post-marriage, but a okay. bunch of people who hadn't really done any kind of discussion about what marriage should look like. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, he realized a lot of them don't really know how to articulate the gospel if they even embrace it or believe it. How can I explain this in a simple way? And it just yeah. sort of turned into this. And so this was like not the full on, this is the whole presentation. This was just sort of the little, these little talking points, these circles and arrows just become the talking points. And so, you know, I think it's important to remember, you don't need the circles and arrows to talk about the gospel. Yeah. Right. Like you, you can just share the gospel the best you can. Trust the Holy Spirit will do the work that he's doing. Be faithful. God's going to do that work. You know, right? I, which is great. I mean, our church that I pastor has a card with kind of our worship time on it. And on the back is a little gospel message. And I was thinking about that while we've been on this uh, on this podcast. It just talks about admitting, believing, and confessing. It doesn't have a lot about the weight of your sin. It's just kind of a tool that kind of maybe gets the gets gets the ball rolling. Right. You, you know, well, okay. Thing. So, so like, let's be really fair. I created that card, you know, like yeah. a decade ago or something. Right. And, something. uh, and let's critique that a little bit. It's yeah. just for a quick flash in the pan, but if that's all the gospel that the person ever gets, right. well, then they're going to be in some trouble. But the idea is, okay, maybe they get saved from that little card. That's fine. But sure. every Christian should be hearing the gospel often, regularly. We still need the gospel. We are we yeah. we are saved. We're being saved. We will be saved. Yeah. Like we, this is why Paul's constantly reminding the church of the gospel, and we should be growing in the gospel more and more and more and more. So if that's the very first articulation, maybe yeah. it's enough. Maybe it's not. But if I was critiquing that for my articulation yeah. of the gospel 
30 years after I became a Christian? Well, that's pretty sad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One day after I become a Christian? Well, right. if that's all I got. That might be enough, it, right? And that's part of being sanctified. I think when we first get saved, we really don't understand a lot about our salvation or the weight of our sin, you know? And some of that you already feel on your own. You don't need it on a card. Like, I feel it. Like, I'm yeah. walking through it. Yeah. And what I love about the card that you made is there's a link to a website page that has a lot more about the gospel on there. Yeah, there's and like so, five or six presentations, right? Yeah. On that one. Yeah. So it's hard on a little index card to put a ton of stuff a full gospel thing with the weight of your sin and all that, or a sticker or that kind of thing, or in a 15, 30 second story that you're sharing with somebody in an elevator ride, you know, which so. I think on the salty believer.com site, we I'm pretty sure we've set it up. So it's kind of very similar. Here's four five, six presentations. Some are very lengthy. Yeah. Very detailed with a full illustration. Some are really artsy. Some are really just straight up mechanical. And here's some scripture as so that, there's opportunity to see that and hear that from multiple different avenues of approach and think about it in different ways. So that like one thing isn't necessarily going to be the only way we're going to present it, but so you can see it lots of different ways. So in the weaknesses of one, you might find the strengths of another. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's on our website, saltybeliever.com backslash the hyphen gospel. And there's about three or four there that people can watch. Yeah. Really dive into that more. And so, so there you go. Like that, that's a way to handle that. Uh, one more question. I think I just want to ask you this question. How often do you, so here's what I appreciate about this email that I got. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of reading and there was, like I said, I agreed with some, didn't agree with all. That's fine. Not a big deal. Not want to argue it out. I appreciate that this no, those are good points. brother wanted to critique and think about the tools we use. So how yeah. often do you stop? I mean, some of the stuff we just take at face value and never think about it. No, for sure. How often do you find yourself like really critiquing? What are the unintended consequences of using? I know we did this on staff a lot, but do we do it enough? Should How do Christians go about critiquing the tools in Christendom that we use and that are popular? What do you think, no, man? I, I'm putting you on the spot. I don't think we do it near enough. I think a lot of times we'll go with something because our denomination or the organization we're part of publishes it. So we just go, well, it must be good. You know, right. whether it's a gospel track or, or a... A story curriculum of or whatever curriculum yeah the headings in the bible oh my goodness the pericope headings oh sure those are dangerous man every once in a while like, yeah this is about blank and i'm like is it and then we read it together and like actually man, man yeah. i mean you even challenged me on an episode to really compare the csb study bible to the esb study yeah, i'm bible. doing are you still doing that because I'm, I'm planning doing that on... you know i'm a couple weeks in and i'm like ooh, I'm, the esb is a little ahead right now i i, I wasn't gonna out. tip the scales to the listener but yeah i'm feeling like wait a minute this is more robust i'm leaning the esv i'm i definitely am you anyway just, you can't, whether it's an organization or um an author you've got to be critical of it you got to say what they get wrong you know what what yeah. needs to be improved here so. Yeah, because we, we don't critique God's word, it critiques right. us. Right. But yeah, when you think about even translation and even about, and I think that's okay. We don't need to be like, you know, you do it in kindness, but you speak truth and love and you go, wait, where where could this be improved upon? I think that's the yeah. way you ask it. How could we improve upon this? Yeah. How absolutely. could we make this even more effective? Make it better. How, yeah, yeah, how do we make this thing better? And I've started, I've started thinking about that a lot since reading this email that we got. I'm going, okay, you know. Okay, some of these things almost get a free pass that shouldn't. Because yeah. even this little gospel thing, that's not much. I'm working with this young man here at the church, and I'm loving it. And he's working on, you know, he, he gets his prepackaged curriculum. And yeah. he started kind of going, how do I work on this? And how do I make it better? And this doesn't seem like the point. And we've got to the point slowly uh, of just putting that to the side and not looking at it. Looking at the Bible and doing basically a Simeon Trust pathway type thing, you know, and talking yeah. through it and working on it. And he comes back and he goes, wow. And then he goes back to that curriculum and then he's able to go, did they get this right in the way that I see the scripture or not? Sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, that's there. Sometimes it's like, wow, they they swing and a miss on that one. Sure. Right. Like, oh, I yeah. see what they're now that I now that he's done the hard work. He can yeah. say, I see what they were trying to do. They were right. trying to connect it to this. But. They missed here, here, like, because some of it is they start with a big idea and then they build scripture in to make that idea. Right. Whereas we're going the other way. What does scripture actually say? What is the idea of this text? And they don't always line up based on that curriculum that's been purchased. Well, man, and that's the key on everything, right? Is we've got to really start with scripture because whether it's a gospel sharing tool or a commentary, or let's just say I'm, I'm looking to understand the end times and understand revelation. If I just go with a book, the first book I see on Amazon and just go with what he said, and don't compare it to scripture, 
I, I could end up in the weeds. Right. You know, no, you probably will so. if you just go, what's the most popular thing out there that everybody wants to buy? Like, eh, I don't know. The, the scripture is invaluable, but these authors aren't necessarily. Even the commentators can get things wrong. And well, so if you I, start with the commentary versus the scripture. I'm teaching a class right now on uh, Bible study tools at the church here. And, and I always start with this sort of caveat. As you learn better tools, sometimes you're going to go, wait a minute. I think I got that wrong. And I was sharing some stories of things that I have taught that sure. I've heard or things that I yeah. thought I'm going, Oh man, later down the line, as I've critiqued even my own stuff, I'm like, wow, I sure got that wrong. And I know there's stuff that I, that's wrong on the websites and the things yeah. that I'm involved in because I know I'm not perfect. Right. So hopefully people are critiquing me and helping. Me. In fact, I'll tell you one. So I have a, we have a video on the, uh, the YouTube channel and the salty believer dot com youtube channel and it's how to pick a study bible and uh okay. and numerous people in there pointed this out i'm stacking up all these big study bibles this is this this is that blah 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 and i didn't own the reformation study bible yeah and when i first read about it i thought it was notes from the reformers right i did not realize it was notes from people at ligonier ministry isn't that who does right. it yep. yep it's like rc Sproul stuff mostly right and i'm like uh, yeah Oh, He's the general oh. Editor. yeah. So I get that yeah. and I'm like, oops, and that's on the video and yep. like, yep, straight up got that wrong. And then <laughs> over time, I learned that the newer Ryrie study Bibles have had more contributors. Originally, it was just kind yep. of the work there. But and so like, yeah, that doesn't have everything right. Does that mean the video should be, you know, thrown out because I messed up? I hope not. But right. You know, I didn't even know that until somebody pointed a couple things out. And I'm like, oh, that's really helpful. And then I pick up a copy. Oh, yeah, I, they're definitely right. I screwed that up. Uh, yeah. It happens, right? So I appreciate I appreciate the email. And I appreciate that we're trying to figure out how to make the tool better. Um, I hope that's his aim and not just to, like, blast somebody for being wrong. I don't think – I didn't get the sense that was the case. I think it was an attempt for improvement. It's going to help me make the tool better. I'm going to go back and, and really think about how I explain that and use that to really share the gospel. Because I think there's more that can be said about sin and, and more that can be done to really present a, a bigger gospel picture. I think it's helping me too. Hey, listen, we want to get your emails. So if you're listening, and I, I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, we want to encourage you to do that wherever you're, wherever you're listening to podcasts. Um, if, you, if you want to go out and find my error videos, they're on the YouTube channel, saltybeliever.com YouTube channel. Uh, we want to hear from you. So the the email address is saltybeliever at gmail.com. Or go to saltybeliever.com, fill out a form, or the little communication thing. We'd love to hear from you. And then also, if you're anywhere in the area where we're at, uh, Josiah, tell us Redeeming Life. Yeah, I'm in Bountiful, Utah, just outside Salt Lake City. RedeemingLifeUtah.org is our website. Go check that out. I am in Holdridge, Nebraska, outside of a lot of cornfields. And uh, actually, no, there's a lot. Phelps County, a lot of small towns. Uh, if you're in the Nebraska area or passing through, come come check it out. The website is currently theporchlife.org. And uh, I think it's going to be, well, I, I shouldn't say because I don't know exactly what it's going to be. But be uh, surprise for later. There is a little bit of work to get that to be a little more clear. So it'll be really identifiable. Um, so you can check that out that way or just reach out directly to us. We'd love to chat more with you about it. And we'd love to hear from you. So don't hesitate. Send us an email. We'd love to chat about it. Till next time. Thanks for listening. Salty Believer Unscripted is a production of saltybeliever.com. Visit the website to find more resources like the podcast you've just listened to.